Star Wars fans will soon have a new force to use, but it comes with a hefty price tag. A legal tender coin set is being released featuring characters from the movie series. New Zealand Mint has been commissioned to manufacture the coins, but they'll only be able to be used legally in Niue. The first coins to be released are scheduled for launch this month in Chicago at the Numismatic Association show and will include eight one-ounce silver coins and ten silver-plated base metal coins depicting Star Wars characters. The effigy used to for these coins is the government of Niue. Further releases are planned every year until 2014. Each coin will be a $2 legal tender in Niue. However, if you are after a set of four, you might want to save up your $2 coins as it will set you back 469 New Zealand dollars. According to New Zealand Mint Vice President of USA Operations Chris Kirkness, timing couldn't be better as Lucasfilms will be launching the complete Star Wars saga on Blu-ray in September. He said the coin program release will coincide with the global activity and is tipped to be a bestseller. Head of the New Air Philatelic and Numismatic, Honorable Takata Langi, couldn't comment because he's off the island. Three weeks to the opening of the South Pacific Games in New Caledonia and New Air's main sporting body received unwanted news that New Air will have to pay 2000 American dollars. Secretary General to Niska announced his disappointment today to other sporting codes ahead of the first team departure for the Games next week. Boxing and bodybuilding pulled out of the Games, which has led to Niska having to fork out the 2000 US dollars. Secretary General Alan Ta Tano said if the money does not get paid, the other codes cannot participate at the Games. He said provisions will need to be added to accommodate any changes prior to the Games. He said codes that withdraw will have a serious impact on future representation for Niue. The first representatives will leave the island next week. Niue Rugby got a visit from one of the old pros of the game this week to assess different aspects of the island's game and make recommendations that is hoped to increase rugby development on the island. Mr. Bruce Cook from the International Rugby Board said there are areas that need fine-tuning and there are areas that is proposed to change. And that also includes the inclusion of rugby trials on the island. Well, certainly we've got to put a, uh, a more structured framework in place for the player pathway. Now, player, the player is essential to the game. New A Rugby Union is not here for the administrators. They're not here for the coaches. Uh, they're here for the players. So we've got to put a structure in that gives the players a pathway and we've come up with some good ideas in, in speaking to people who have, who have come up with those ideas um, and we've, we've moulded them while we've been here to progress uh, primary school rugby, to progress rugby at high school, to progress women's and girls rugby along in those areas as well and also to look at the the what happens in the competitions, in the club competitions here, and how we can harvest players in a better manner to make better players for the national team. One of the hardest things also here in Niue is having game time for those who wish to represent Niue. Um, and it's always hard. It's always the Niueans in New Zealand because they have game time. Um, was there any discussions at all to improve or develop in that area? Well, that's, that's absolutely right. The more game time you get under some uh, under good conditions, the better the player you're probably going to be. Uh, New Way um, hasn't got that game time at the moment, but what we would hope that they start to increase the, the, the length of some of their competitions, be it in the, the 7s or the 10s or the 15s, to, to, get, uh, to get more game time for the players. Also, we're looking at doing some... some uh, some more focused training and education programs uh, for coaches, uh, and that translates to players as well, and referees. So with that in mind, it'll take us a few years to get there, two or three years to get there. It'll be a three- to four-year plan. And remember, there's a, a new strategic plan that'll come on board at the start of next year with the new 
uh, committee executive for the at the annual general meeting. Uh, so I think that uh, we'll have a better idea of how things will work under that new uh, new committee and new constitution. One area of New Israel Rugby that has also been discussed is structure and the constitution as well as funding. Well, we do a very broad but in-depth review of many aspects of rugby, not only the playing of it uh, at the, the national level, uh, but the playing of it at primary school level, at secondary school level and at club level. As well as the playing of the game, we look at training and education. We look at the governance and administration of the game, which is very, very important uh, because it provides a framework for us to, to work with, uh, and also financial aspects and commercial aspects and you can include in that women's rugby as well. So what have you found so far looking at some of these areas? Well, it's, it's interesting that, that the things that, that uh, uh, are usually uh, issues and problems in, in uh, this union are the same that, uh, problems that other unions have as well. And they are in the areas of constitutional governance. That, yes, there's a constitution in place, but it... It was good when it was first done, but there are things that we've got to do to it to upgrade it, to make it, to make it a, a lot more robust constitution to allow the union to have really good governance. Not good governance, but really good governance, and that's what we want in all these unions. And it's, if you haven't got good governance, other things can fall apart. The playing of the game can fall apart. The financial side of the game can fall apart. But I'm happy to say that there's a few tweaks that we can make to... The, the constitution of the um, new, new Iron Rugby Union, um, which will improve, um, we hope, things that are going on within the union. There hasn't been any major problems at this point, but we don't want major problems to come up because of these, these uh, issues uh, that we've found with the constitution. Now, funding has always been an issue um, here anyway as well to develop rugby. Um, how much does IRB or the International Rugby Board um, Give Newe for rugby development on the island. Yeah, Newe gets uh, eight thousand pounds from the International Rugby Board. Uh, I have heard of rumours around the place that they are getting far more than that, but I can assure you that they're they're not. Um, they're certainly not the the lowest um, uh, paid or paid. Uh, they're certainly not the lowest uh, ranked as far as the payment of unions go for our development grants, um, but they're nowhere near the highest. And it depends on many, many factors. It just doesn't it is not determined by the number of players. That's one factor. But there's just so many factors. The current um, uh, international uh, crisis, monetary crisis, uh, which started in December 2008, saw an, all our unions worldwide have decrease in, in funding to them, which included unions like Australia and New Zealand. They had a a major drop in funding compared to the, the, the drop in funding that Nui had about three years ago. So it is always an issue, uh, funding. We can never get enough money for any of our unions, uh, but what we've got to do is try and put, do that equitably and uh, to ensure that they use their money well. And uh, I think that uh, we've got a structure now with our trust development grants uh, where we can be fairly safely assured how the unions are using their money. Niue is sending four local rugby players from the island in the next couple of weeks to join the main team in New Zealand for the South Pacific Games. Niue's Met Office, the climate change section, and key stakeholders on the island will be in training next week to familiarise themselves with a new computer-based climate science tool. A team of scientists from the Australian Government Pacific Climate Change Science Program to conduct a week's training for staff of the MIT service on the PCCSP Climate Futures. A key part of the PCCSP has been developing computer-based tools to support the role of National Weather Service officers as they help address the urgent need for better scientific knowledge about climate change to enable Pacific Island countries prepare for the future. Climate Futures will provide a new approach to accessing information about how Niue's future climate may look. The Niue Med Service is hoping their stakeholders will make use 
of this training and utilize the new tool in their respective areas of work where relevant. Five scientists are due to arrive tomorrow to conduct a week-long training program and another two are expected next week. To end our news bulletin for tonight, the direction and drive for the private sector development is getting more support with yet another training session for businesses held this week. The session on basic financial management tips targeted at business people or those considering getting into or setting up a new business. A Sydney-based voluntary community worker, Terry Ann McPhail, who also has a background in accounting, has offered time whilst on the island to discuss with business people the importance of bookkeeping and cash management. Your Chamber of Commerce says the response so far has been good, with a reasonable number interested from the private sector. In addition to members from the new tax division, also presented on tax matters that businesses need to be aware of. New Chamber of Commerce hopes to have regular training sessions on financial management, especially for those considering setting up new businesses. That's our news bulletin for tonight. Good evening. Music